For those serious about becoming successful, consistently profitable options traders, now is the time to build skills in technical analysis, market analysis, and applied volatility to get those results. We have multiple memberships, starting with our Go membership that teaches rules-based trading and our Pro membership that teaches more subjective trading. For more information, go to LockInYourSuccess.com slash memberships. Let's pretend for a minute that I want to enter this trade here, right? So I'm looking at doing a 50-40 broken wing butterfly, you know, about zero delta, about one delta here. And this is the trade I want to enter. And I'm looking at my mid prices or whatever. And I kind of want to get an idea is, is this a good value for this trade? One of the things we could do is what we talked about before is we can do the synthetics price, synthetics pricing with the equivalents and so forth. But what I find a lot of times even more powerful is understanding what this position has been doing over time. Like if I've been trading this, if I've been in this position for two weeks, I, I kind of know, I know if my value is being depressed. In other words, if I got in this two weeks ago when I was expecting to be up $3,000 and I'm down $40, well, you know, that's, I, I know I have depressed value on my butterfly, right? If I'm in this position and I've been in for a couple of weeks, and I was expecting to be up maybe $800 and I'm up $5,000. Again, I know that the, the, the butterfly is overpriced. What we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to go back and, you know, you can choose your time period. I like to use two weeks. We're going to go two, two weeks back and put this position on and we're going to make some thoughts about, or we're going to make some projections with our analytical software to see what the analytical software thinks this is going to be worth at this time frame, right? So our price point is 1939. I want to mark that down. I want to go back two weeks and I'm going to go here and I'm going to put on this position. So this is a different trade, right? The one we were looking at before was, uh, well, it's not in here yet. I want to put on this trade. So this is the trade that I'm thinking of putting on two weeks ago, right? I put on, I think I put it on now, but two weeks ago, this is what it would have looked like. If I put this trade on and I look, go to my price point of 1939 and I go ahead 14 days on my projection lines, this is telling me that assuming everything works normally. So Talking about analytical software, most people think analytical software tells you what the position is going to be worth in a certain amount of time. It does not. They think it tells you, you know, the theta number, they think you gain $37 a day or whatever. That's not what happens. This is a projection that is programmed into the model based on nothing changing. So if nothing changes, market pressure, implied volatility, um, going into the future. Now, it, it, it assumes implied volatility is going to change a static amount from day to day. We all know that doesn't happen in reality, right? But it makes the assumption that if everything goes as what is most normal, which happens a percentage of the time, but also does not happen a lot of the time, it makes these projections of what your position is going to be worth, which may be fairly accurate in some cases. And in, and in a lot of cases, it's, it, it's completely way off base, right? But it's, it's just a tool that we can use. So knowing in that and understanding that, we can say that if really, if everything changes, if everything goes along normally and the price comes down to this point in 14 days, we should be up $734. Like I said, you'll find out if you do this a lot, sometimes it's fairly accurate. In this case, it's going to be fairly accurate. Sometimes it's way off. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to say, this is saying in 14 days, or as of today, if I'm considering entering this position, I should be up 750, uh, let's see, 39 is um, about $730, right? I'm going to do other periodic checks. I might do, depending on how much I want to get into this, I might do every two days, I might do every week, I might do every four days or whatever. Or if I have a specific day I want to check, I can do that. I'm just going to go seven days which is going to be, let's see, it's the 26th. I actually did this on Tuesday here. So if I go Tuesday and I go 14 days, let me be more accurate. If I go Tuesday and 14 days, it tells me I'm going to be at 754. Okay, so it tells me I'm going to be at plus 754. And again, I might want to check seven days later. And if I do a T plus seven, it tells me that I'm going to be up at about uh, 628. 
about 628. So that's fairly consistent, right? You know, I've gone seven days and the analytical software now tells me I'm still going to be up maybe a little bit less. That implies that something has happened in the marketplace to depress the value of this butterfly slightly from the expectations that the analytical model had, right? So to know, and again, I can, again, I can check this day to day to day, and you might find certain days where this is undervalued. If I come to current day, which is going to be August 8th, it's showing me this position is actually up 360. So I'm only up about half of the amount that the software was saying. Right. So one projection gave me 754, one gave me 628, another one gave me 360. This is a better value than if I had didn't done this process and my position's up two thousand dollars. Right. If if I if I do this process and I know my position's up and my position is up like two thousand dollars, I know that it's high priced in comparison to what it has been priced at. Now I can decide whether this is where the subjective part comes in. I can decide whether that's a good thing or not. Why is it higher priced? Well, maybe there was a Fed announcement, and now that uh, the Fed announcements happened, and you know there was a lot of uncertainty around that announcement, and now that announcement happened, and now there's really no uncertainty anymore, and then it rose up, right? So there was a reason that that happened, and I have to make a judgment call if the market, if the price is actually going to go back down to where it was. But at the same time, when I'm considering my position size, I should be aware that this is a little bit on the overvalued side. And if it goes back to where it was, I'm going to instantly lose, you know, say, say three thousand, you know, two or three thousand dollars off the position just from implied volatility shift or from a market sentiment shift. I'm going to lose that money right off. So that risk is now inherent in the trade, where if the opposite happens, if I came in here and this position was drawn down $2,000, which does happen, by the way, right? My, my analytical software said I was going to be up $800. I come here and my, and my, now my analytical says I'm down $2,000. At that point, I have very little implied volatility risk because the, the butterfly has been crushed. And that represents a really good value for that butterfly in the current marketplace because it's much lower price than it was previously. Now, there's a reason that it's lower priced, and it probably has something to do with a news event. And again, the subjective part coming, coming into play is, is this news event likely priced in now, or is it likely going to be a, um, a problem and, get, and continue to get worse? I can tell you a vast majority of the time, if you have a situation like you're drawing two, down $2,000, that's usually a really good time to enter, right? That's a general statement. But more often than not, that's a very good time to get into a butterfly. And if it's up $2,000, right, those are the extremes, it's probably a bad time to get into a butterfly position because the market's extremely complacent. And if something happens, you're going to get drawn down relatively quickly. Remember, implied volatility has everything to do with not what your implied volatility tells you. Implied volatility is a result. It's not a, a cause. Implied volatility is the result of pressure on options, buying pressure and selling pressure on options. And when there when there's complacency in the market, there's a lot of selling pressure and the extrinsic value in those options goes down, right? Simple supply and demand, implied volatility shows that shows up in implied volatility as a result. And then when the opposite happens, some kind of news comes into the marketplace, the um there becomes a lot of buying pressure on options. It increases the extrinsic value in the options and your implied volatility numbers are going to, as a result, are going to end up going higher. But nothing is happening as a result of implied volatility. Everything is happening as a result of buying and selling pressure on the marketplace. And the sooner you understand that, the better you're going to start to understand um, implied volatility. So anyway... In this case here, this represents, in my in my opinion, a fair value in the marketplace. Probably maybe a little bit better than normal. Because again, we we had eight hundred dollars, uh, we had six hundred dollars, 
Now we're at 360. Assuming I can get executed at this price, which is your other factor, you might this might be an erroneous mid price, but at least I know what price to shoot for here. Right? I can say, you know, if I can get priced at 360, and then I can play with my other uh, pricing and realize if I have to pay, um, you know, realize if I have to pay so much more for this butterfly, then that means the PL would have been whatever, right? You, know, you can make your, your, your mathematical adjustments in your head or on a spreadsheet or whatever you want to do. You know, if I end up having to pay a lot more for this, then that's probably still somewhat normal pricing because if I have to end up paying a lot more for this and, um, oh, uh, it still kind of represents something that's normal. If I end up paying less for this, then that's a really good, really good value on this, right? So if I end up coming in here and I end up getting it at a, at a much better value, then I know that that's just a really good value in this. Like if this was showing, this P let's say this PL was showing me down $2,000 and um, I, hit a, I have a mid price on my butterfly of, I don't know, $10, just throw a number out there. I don't care if I have to pay $11 for it. Because it should be up three sixty. Yeah, I mean it should be up seven hundred dollars. It's down two thousand. If I pay eleven, you know, I'm still down. You know, it would be equivalent to being down like a thousand here, right? So it's that's still a, a tremendous value on that butterfly. Whereas if I'm if this is posting, I'll be out at two thousand, and then I still can't get executed at that price, and I got to go up to twenty five hundred. I mean, I, I'm I'm piling bad on top of bad. And at that point, it's probably not worth me even getting in the trade. Maybe I might want to wait for a better opportunity because I know things are, are just, they're just not priced well at that point. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, but this is a good way to determine your general value of getting into the position. And then, you know, if I'm right with this here, if I entered this today at this price, which we did here, okay, um, you know, I'm down $40 because of my commissions and stuff. And then I go live theoretically. If that's a good price and the market stabilizes a little bit, then this should be up money. And as of right now, it's posting up, you know, two hundred ten dollars, which is kind of in um, in retrospect is in pretty much probably what I would expect, right? I wouldn't expect, even though we got a down move today, I wouldn't necessarily expect that to get hurt too badly because the pressure was already in the position. The other thing you, this can tell you is has implied volatility been um, you could backwards use this to, to see if implied volatility has been pretty much following the model or not to kind of gauge market pressure in your position, right? Um, there's just a lot of different types of uses that you can, you can play with this with.